Hello, my name's Jessica, and today I'm going to talk to you about the origin of crepes Suzette. Just like the tartar tin, which we'll talk about soon, this French dessert is a result of the greatest of accidents. A very elegant story that unfolded in Monte Carlo within the exclusive circle of the world's elite. It was worth a special broadcast. Welcome to Food History Pills. In today's episode, we delve into the intriguing history of the delectable French delight. Our story begins with the renowned French chef, Henri Charpentier, who had a stroke of culinary genius back in 1895, when he was a simple apprentice of chef in the elegant Café de Paris in Monte Carlo. One day, Charpentier was tasked with serving the dessert to none other than the Prince of Wales himself. Now, Let's set the stage. Charpentier had originally crafted delicate French pancakes called crepes, which he envisioned serving tableside of a chafing dish. Alongside these buttery orange wonders, he had prepared a luscious sauce infused with brandy. However, fate had a twist in store for Charpentier on that fateful day. A Charpentier expertly prepared the dessert in front of the prince, an unexpected mishap occurred. The heat from the chafing dish caused the brandy in the sauce to burst into flames, engulfing the chef's creation. But rather than panic, our ingenious chef quickly improvised. In a bold move, he decided to ladle the flaming sauce directly over the delicate pancakes. To his surprise, the Prince of Wales was captivated by this culinary spectacle and impressed with this innovative dish, he christened it Crepes Suzette, named after one of his dining companions. Yet, this is where the narrative becomes intriguingly uncertain. Food historians present two fascinating theories that have captivated their imagination. The first theory takes us into a realm of scandal and romance. Some accounts suggest that Suzette was an adult woman with whom the prince was dining, potentially excluding his wife, Princess Alexandria. According to this version, the dish's name alludes the playboy prince's rendezvous with the mysterious Suzette. However, in a more wholesome interpretation, Suzette emerges as a young girl, the daughter of one of the prince's closest friends. Legend has it that Suzette was so enchanted by the flamboyant dessert that she spontaneously rose from her seat and curtsied to the chef. Charpentier, overjoyed by the warm reception of his disastrous creation, magnanimously offered to name the dish after the prince. Yet, observant as ever, the prince suggested that it should bear the name of the delightful Suzette instead. As we delve further into this culinary enigma, we discover that the story has been initially presented may not be the only one. Historical records and alternative narratives reveal fascinating alternatives that challenge this traditional account. Indeed, it's the flambe technique that had already been in existence long before the purported incident involving Chef Henry Charpentier. But this revelation cast doubt on Charpentier's story or even the serpentipitous royal mishap. Let's explore some of the alternative versions surrounding the creation of crepes. One intriguing narrative attributes the invention of this delightful dip to Charpentier's esteemed cooking teacher, Auguste Escoffier. According to this rendition, it was Escoffier who experimented with the flambe technique using a carousel instead of a brandy employed by Charpentier or the Grand Marionnaire commonly used today. This version suggests that Escoffier played a pivotal role in population of this dish, introducing it to the world of his unique twist. Yet another captivating account involves a different French chef, the owner of the Paris-renowned restaurant Marivaux. Enter Suzanne Reichenberg. 
a talented French theatre actress known professionally as Suzette. In 1897, Reichenberg found herself portraying a character who served flambéed crepes to the other actors on stage on a nightly basis. And it was during this time that the chef, or owner, of the restaurant Marveau began referring to the dish as crepes Suzette in honour of the esteemed actress. As we navigate through these intriguing variations, it becomes clear that the origins of the crepe Suzette are shrouded in mystery and multiple tales. Each narrative adds its own flavour to the dish's story, leaving us to ponder which version holds the true key to its creation. In our quest to uncover the truth behind crepe Suzette, we encounter yet another royal twist, this time within the realms of French history. Legend has it that during the 18th century, a French princess named Suzette de Carrigan approached the esteemed chef of King Louis XV with a tantalising request. She sought a dessert that would feature crepes flambéed in some sumptuous sauce infused with buttery orange and alcohol. The chef, eager to please the princess and impress the king, set to work on this delectable creation once presented to King Louis XV. The dish received resounding acclaim. The flavours danced on the royal palate and the spectacular of the flambéed crepes delighted all in attendance. As a result of its success and in honour of the princess who inspired it, the dish became known as Crepes Suzette. In a vast realm of culinary history, disputes often arise and the origins of Crepes Suzette remain a subject to debate among historians. Each version we explore adds a layer of complexity and intrigues the dish's backstory, leaving us with an enduring mystery that we may never solve. Regardless of its true beginnings, one thing that remains certain, Crepe Suzette continues to captivate food enthusiasts worldwide with its mesmerising spectacle and the harmonies of blended caramelised orange and boozy goodness. There you have it, it's over. I dedicate this episode to all of the Suzettes. <laughs> Even though in 2023, there might not be many of them, if you enjoyed this show, feel free to like it and even better, subscribe to History Food Channel to follow the upcoming episodes. I'll see you soon for season two. And don't forget, eating's a privilege. Enjoy it. Bye.